welcome back to the channel. We are back at Ravenscar. It is going to be potentially quite a chilly hunt, as you might gather from the snow on the ground. It is about minus two. It snowed last night. Uh, it meant the roads were not too bad, but not ideal. So I suspect there won't be an awful lot of people making this trip down here today. And so I'm hoping I'll have the beach to myself. You can see from the seas out in the bay over there that it has been fairly rough for the last few days. So I'm hoping some more stuff has been turned over. Uh, there's been a few really nice marine reptile finds from Saltwick Bay that I've seen. Uh, so I'm hoping we might have a few nice finds, whether they be ammonites or marine reptile, or who knows what else down here on the coast. Uh, but it'll take me a little bit of time to walk down. As you might gather, we are only at the beginning. Uh, and I've got a lot of walking through snow and ice to get down to the beach. I'll be back with you when we're down there. Haven't even made it to the first beach proper, uh, but just keep an eye out because the seas have been turning over some stuff. There's a nodule that I found just there. Oop, that one at the bottom. Uh, and there's a few more interesting nodules over there. There's the one in the middle uh, and the little one there. That I'll just have a look at. If there's anything good, I will show you them. If not, just presume they were shells and bellum nights at best. It may not seem like much, but uh, this was the entrance to the first bay, uh, but it's moved completely. This is all slipped uh, and changed since I was last here. Uh, so that just gives you an indication of how big the seas are. Uh, I'd normally be expected to climb into it about where I'm stood, but it's off away and there's fresh slides that have come down. So this is what we like winter for, these big waves to turn everything around. Just to show you how cold it has been, you can see all the way up, icicles coming down, the little waterfall that's always here. It is still pretty darn cold. Uh, more annoyingly though, is it is also so rough that we are struggling to have anything to look for at the minute. Uh, we've still got a couple hours before the tide is all the way out. But uh, yeah, the uh, exposed area that's safe to hunt is not very big. Uh, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, first decent looking nodule, picked it up, and Raven's car being Raven's car, the super sticky and the ammonite split through the middle. So, little back, I suspect. Hey ho. Uh, I saw this big loose shale block and a couple of nodules that I saw ammonite keels sticking out of. So I thought, let's dig them out. First one, blown. Second one, also blown. Hey ho. Again, a big old loose block, but just fun to show off some of the things you can see sticking out of them. Uh, so there's a Hildy keel here. I'm not gonna bother digging it out. It doesn't have any look of a nodule around it. So I'm expecting that middle to be well and truly gone. Uh, and then what you can just about see here, that really smooth bit right there, uh, that there is a belmite phragmacone, and that isn't a nodule, uh, but I don't collect belmite phragmacones for the sake of it, unless they're attached to the belmite itself. So both will stay in the nodule, or both will stay in the rock. Uh, I'm gonna leave it all here. This is a bit of a shame, actually. Uh, I don't really collect belmites and shells, uh, but this one I probably would have done had they been complete. So we've got belmite coming into where its phragmacone would have been at the back here, and then a complete bivalve, which has got both sides there. And so that would have been a really nice display piece if they had both been there and whole. Shame. Again, these sandstone blocks continue to surprise me. Sometimes they're full of rubbish. Other times you get gorgeous parts of fossils sticking out of them. Uh, I would like a gorgeous ammonite out of them, but uh, that there is part of a pinna bivalve, and I'll put a picture up of one if I can remember to do it in post. Just scrambling into the second bay and picking up the first gramo nodules. Uh, although this one is a bit unusual. It, uh, Looks like a Gramo, other than the fact the, um, the shell color is a bit different, which I know is an odd thing to be using. Uh, and also that whirl's getting really big, really quick. I think it's an interesting one. I will be putting that in the bag straight away. So I'm back in post and I'm just gonna show off why sometimes it's useful picking up those little oddities uh, and thinking about what they might be, even if uh, your idea on the beach is wrong and why it's worth keeping hold of some of the things that are nice. Uh, these are my grandmas that are just prepped and on display. I've got other ones in the collection that are not fully prepped that are better than these. Um, but you can see quite easily the world sections don't increase at a really drastic rate. They kind of are a fairly steady increase in growth. However, there is one group of ammonites that do have 
that unusual increase in size. And it's these ones right in the middle. And these are my relatively rare individuals of the Lytoceros family. So there's three Lytos and my Alica Lytoceros here in the middle. And the thing you'll find is that little one I picked up needs a prep, but hopefully you can see it has an increase in world section that looks very much like these. So I think this little one is actually a Lytoceros or a Lytocerid relative. Uh, and I believe it's a Perilytoceros, which is very rare, found only in the Gramo beds. Uh, so only going to be found at Ravenscar. So it'll be a nice little one to get fully prepped and added to the collection. Big chunk of something ammonite but I'm not sure what. So it could be a big Gramo, maybe a Hogia. Uh, nice catapult. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have any more ability to tell from just that little piece. And sadly, the whole thing is not here. Just broke down a pretty big nodule and all that was in it was single ammonite. Looks like there's more of it here, but that makes me think it's not in a straight line. But I've got very little in my bag, so I'll take it as is. And some nice partial bits sticking out. So a bit there, another bit just in there. Uh, but not worth digging out if uh, they're preserved in the shale. The middles won't be there. I know I said earlier I don't collect bivalves, but that looks to be quite a nice one there. Especially quite a nice one on the nodule next to it as well. A little scallopy thing. Uh, I might just dig those out and see what they look like. Bivalve came out quite nice. It looks pretty good on that side, although, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's all there. We'll take it back anyway. Again, bag's light. Uh, some nice looking grammars and shells sticking out of this and then you come to this side and you see the nodules uh, and I had a look in the side of this nodule and you might just see some sections of some grammars sticking out so I'll take this big one out and see if there's anything in it and uh, then we'll have a look at the others. Dohogias, they haunt me so, it's a really beautiful sized one but cut in the middle. Uh, I'll still try and rescue it out of the shell block. It's another nice looking bivalve sticking up there, Let's see if we can get that one out. Yeah, that one's come out pretty well. Uh, shame there's a bit of damage on this side here, uh, but otherwise, so it's pretty good. Just saw this Gramo block sticking out, so I thought, let's have a look. There looks to be a nice Bellamite on this side, little one there, and a big one there. So that'll come back. Should be a nice piece. A couple of other things, because I was just here looking down when I picked up that last Gramo block, and we've got a few other things. This is a beautiful stone. I don't do the stone collecting, but it's got nice layers. This will have come from a long way, probably up the coast in Scotland, essentially from the last ice ages. Beautiful rock. Uh, not going to do anything with it, but just wanted to show it off. But what so is here is an ammonite bit sticking out of that, and an ammonite bit sticking out of that, and ah, a worn ammonite sticking out of that. Yeah. We'll split the other two down and just see what they are. Uh, the smaller nodule didn't want to split, but that one did. And that's a beauty of a pseudo. That's a beauty. There's another little, probably a small one on the side there. Not sure if it's worth it, but that there's, that's stunner right down. Ooh. I just saw this nodule sticking up like that on the ground. So I turned it over and yep, beach prepped Gramo. Perfect. Yeah, it may not look like much, but that's part of an ammonite. So that's one of the blue white specials. Probably a Physliogramoceros, but it's broken and it's got bits in two different directions that you can see there. Uh, that's not even worth me taking home, but just thought I'd show it. Just picked up this funky thing. I think it's a piece of wood. Might be a scrappy bit of bone, but I don't think so. I think it's a piece of wood, but it's a bit tough to see with how much wear it's had. So it'll stay here. I've just been smacking this one to kind of figure out what the salmonite is because it didn't fit any of the obvious things in my head. So maybe hog, yeah. So I thought I'd keep smacking it, see if it'll break open and uh, something else popped out. Something else popped out. And I think that is a hog, yeah. It's got a big keel. It doesn't quite look like a pseudo, although the nodes and ridges in towards the middle of it uh, might just be a bit distorted because of... Um, what looks like a midline crease just kind of running here um, but I'm pretty sure that's a hog here so two for the day well three I guess if you argue about the other one um, this one looks like it has more promise for a middle but I'm still not optimistic we'll see I'll wrap it up and put it in the bag it's a bit of a shame that one it's got a really nice middle I think it's a cat looking at the thickness of it, it might be a little paranalcerous but shame all the same 
Oh, I just tapped over this one. Looks a bit like a DAC, but I'm a little skeptical. I can't really justify why it just doesn't look like it to me. Um, but it's split kind of badly on the whirl, but I've got the other bit in my hand as you can see. Uh, so I'll take both bits, put it back together and prep from the other side. Here's something I've never seen before. Uh, this is a big gastropod, so the top of it here, and then you've got effectively whirls going down. Uh, so one of the big coiled snails. Uh, it's on the other side too. Um, I feel like I have to take that. I don't tend to collect them, but I know a lot of people who do. Uh, and I suspect I can give that to someone to have a look at. Uh, but yeah, different, very different. Just scrambled back over. The uh, waves do not make it easy, especially as the tide is now starting to come back in. So just hunting the last bits and pieces here that I didn't see uh, on the way across just because the tide was still in too far. And so we get a few bits like this, which I think is a little Paranoceros, looking at sort of the ribbing and the nodes. Uh, so that'll go in the bag. Looked to be a pretty nice deck if you see the edge, looks pretty nice. Um, but then you can see there's a bit of distortion on here and it's flat on that side. So I think I might just leave it even though it looks really promising. Bit of an unusual on this. I saw that little bit sticking out there so I thought I'd give it a tap. When I did, it actually popped a really odd way for a nodule this shape. Uh, shame it exploded badly because otherwise it would have been an all right deck, but mm, probably not worth it with the amount of pyrite content you can see from the green color on it. Uh, when I first picked this up, I didn't know what it was other than an ammonite. Uh, no, now you can see there's actually a few nodes on it, so I've given it a tap anyway. And you can see it's a lovely set of nodes going around. I uh, don't know how good it will be, but we'll take it home anyway. I'm just filming this for my own sake as much as anything, but I don't remember some of this being down here when I came through. So I think enough this big boulder just in front here has fallen off from up there. Uh, so just another reminder, things are moving a lot at the minute. Uh, be careful, be safe. I think this might actually be the first time you've seen me today uh, <laughs> and you're probably all thankful for it. Uh, but as you can see in the background, it's a lovely day still, uh, but freezing cold uh, and I have been wrapped up warm the whole day. Uh, I will show you what Raven's Cove looks like still and it's still quite lovely, uh, but as you might be able to see with the clouds uh, and the horizon starting to change color, the sun is starting to go down even though it's only about two in the afternoon. It is the joys of English winter. Uh, it is still freezing cold, uh, but it will make the climb back up a lot easier. Uh, it's had a good day. The Hogias always make my trips, even if one doesn't have a middle in the second. We will find out if it has a middle. Uh, the pseudo was gorgeous, and we've got a nice diversity of things, some nice grammars, a uh, couple of um, Paranoceros. Uh, but I can't complain too much. It's been a good day and nice to get out, nice to enjoy the coast, even if it is cold. So I'm going to make my climb back up, and I will catch you all in the next hunt.